Hi, this is Phil Chandler on a rather rare sunny day in 2024 and I'm just going to do a quick video to show you some gadgets that I find useful for beekeeping and you may too. So I've got a collection of uh, gadgets, some of which are new to me actually and I've hardly used very much at all and some of which I've been using for a long time. So let's start with the new stuff. I got this recently. It's uh, a little you can see if I hold it up to the camera, you can see it's like a, a piston effect. It's got a solid plunger inside a steel tube. I think it's all made from stainless steel. It's got a chain holding the two bits together and a spring. So essentially the action is very much like a, uh, should we say a syringe plunger type thing. Um, and the purpose of this device is for extracting bee bread from comb and I'll demonstrate that for a minute. So let's move things aside for a moment. Now this is a piece of cone that I've already cut chunks out of for various reasons but in the middle of it you can see there's quite a lot of bee bread. For those of you who aren't quite sure what bee bread is it's it's pollen fermented in nectar so it's the food that the nurse bees eat in order to produce the what we call baby milk for the sake of argument baby milk and um, royal jelly which is fed to the uh, the queen larva of course but all the all the eggs that are laid in a comb are fed on uh, a little blob of royal jelly so this is what this is like a superfood that the nurse bees consume um, in order to produce their the, the royal jelly so the po purpose of this little tool is to get inside a cell. I'm just going to choose a cell here that's got some some bee bread in. You push it into the cell quite firmly. In fact, I've gone right through, not, not entirely necessary. Then you withdraw it. And now, if I show you on the palm of my hand, as I press the plunger, out comes a nice plug of bee bread. And if you haven't tasted bee bread before, you really should. It's amazing stuff. It's a very, very complex flavour. In fact, multiple flavours. I'm just going to pop a piece in my mouth. It's really quite remarkable. I'm not even going to attempt to describe the flavour of it. But if you haven't tried bee bread, you really must try it. I'm not saying, you know, this is a product that you should necessarily produce in quantity for sale. Um, but for your own benefit for your own use and for your own consumption and just for your own curiosity I would say it's definitely worth trying and this little gadget in my hand here cost me well I forget exactly what it was it was about one pound fifty uh, I don't know less than two dollars maybe in American money um, but it, like almost nothing from AliExpress where else so this is something you know you might choose to, to, to invest in, as it were, <laughs> just for the sake of being able to taste um, this delicious bee bread. Now, there are other ways of extracting bee bread, but none of them are really very satisfactory. This is easily the best method I've found so far. Right, so that's, that's the first gadget out of the way. I'll just put this <clears throat> to one side. Um, the next gadget I have not used extensively I've only tested it so far and it's this this is another very low cost product from guess where and I think this one cost me about the same as the um, the bee bread extractor and what it is is a cutout device um, what we call it um, it's a tool for cutting out a cell which contains a larva which you have decided is suitable for raising a queen. So if you're raising your own queens or you want to raise your own queens this is a way of doing it. Now I'm using just using the same old piece of comb here because I, I, haven't, I haven't got a piece of um, comb with larva in it to hand and I'm not going to take a piece out of the hive just for the sake of this but I just want to show you the action of this. So what it is is a sharpened tube with a wooden handle essentially on a, on a I imagine this is stainless steel, I don't know, it may be plated. But um, the idea is that you can push it through the comb. So let's say, um, let's say about here, I've identified a cell 
with a lava which I deem to be the correct size, in other words, uh, less than, less than uh, um, a day after hatching, shall we say, less than 24 hours old. So I'm going to try and raise a queen from this. So what I want to do is cut out a piece of comb like so. I hope you can see me doing this. I'm just pushing it directly through the comb. Now, you would want to push it cleanly through, and I'm doing my best to do that. It's quite old comb, which is uh, a little bit more difficult to manage than... OK, and this is obviously comb with, with mostly bee bread in it, so it's, you know... But it's going to look very much like this, and it's going to have, in the centre there, it's going to have... Um, the cell that we're really interested in from making queens from. Now you will notice that it's also cut through, let me see, six other cells and of course on the reverse side of the comb it's cut through an, at least another six. So there is a certain wastage rate with this method and it, I think we'll call it the, uh, the, the, the plug method for, for queen rearing because you would then mount this wax plug uh, in such a way as to hang downwards inside your cell building, building colony and the idea is that the bees would then raise a queen from this this central help cell now you may probably want to break down the cells around it I would imagine um, I haven't done that so far I've just used the central cell but it, it might be better to break down the cells around it to reduce the num the the possibility of them raising um, more than one queen in one very small uh, area which would make it difficult to remove the cell so let's say you did that now you've got one cell there this plug would be mounted to hang down vertically from a frame uh, and hopefully the bees would raise a queen from it the idea being that you're not ever touching the larva in the central cell unlike with grafting where you're li literally lifting the larva out and putting it into a plastic cup with this method you're not disturbing it at all so I think that has potential uh, for being a, a potential well let's call it let's say it has potential to be a superior queen rearing method than grafting although I must say the wastage rate is considerable compared to grafting but then given that a, a good queen can lay out a full frame easily in a day um, I don't think we need to worry too much about the wastage rate anyway that's the that's the, the second gadget, um, very cheap. Uh, you can make your own, I'm sure, actually. You could make your own using a piece of suitable uh, tubing, perhaps um, a plumbing olive, uh, if you know what that is, uh, sharpened to an edge and mounted on a, on a piece of um, metal, uh, maybe soldered on, and uh, that would be a uh, equivalent to this. But considering how cheap this is, honestly, you may as well buy one. It's, uh, again, less than two pounds. So we've done two of our gadgets. Okay, here's another one. This is one I've used for many years, actually. It's, uh, it's a queen marking cage. And uh, what I should do is get a pen so I can show you its use. Okay, where are we? Right, so this is a queen marking cage. And it's got a piston which has a foam pad in it to stop you injuring the queen so you're just putting very gentle pressure on her it has a sliding part here which holds the queen in place uh, along with the plunger so if you can imagine I haven't got a queen to hand to do this with um, but let's just imagine that there's a queen in there you with one finger you can slide the plunger up hold her in place very gently against this um, queen excluder section here and then with your queen marking pen you can just put a little blob uh, of this marker ink on her back perfectly safe uh, to use uh, marker ink on her back and uh, this is coded of course according to the year that you're doing it in this, this is a red pen but there's also five altogether different colors depending on the year and uh, that way then you can you can withdraw the piston slightly let the ink dry on the on the queen and then when you're ready you can just slide this back to re release her back into the hive so you know it's it's a 
a complicated little gadget in some ways, but in fact it's very simple and very easy to use. You can also use it quite effectively for actually catching a queen. Um, if, you're, if you've got the queen on a, on a frame, you can actually run her directly into this cage relatively easily. Um, you might get one or two other bees in there with her, but that doesn't matter too much because you, you'll still be able to see her and be able to uh, hold her very gently against the, against the rack there to mark her. You can practice marking on drones. In fact, that's, that's what I tend to recommend to beginners. Drones can't sting you. Uh, it doesn't matter too much if you accidentally uh, damage a drone. Well, it will matter to the drone, of course, but um, it, it's much less important to, to accidentally injure a drone than it is to injure a queen. So practice on drones. Pop a drone in there, uh, close it in, push him up to the surface, and to put a mark on him. Uh, of course, what you'll find if you do that is you'll have loads of drones flying around with, with queen markings on them, which is going to confuse you later on, perhaps, but okay, you can live with that. Let's continue the queen theme, and this is what we'll call a queen clip. Uh, I think that's what people tend to call it, queen clip. This is great for just catching a queen and keeping her safe, and the way I use it is simply have it in your top pocket ready when you're opening a hive. Actually almost any time you're opening a hive this is worth having handy because there are times when um, you want to, uh, you may find the queen, you may see her you know without even looking for her particularly and you might want to just keep her safe while you do something else in the hive. Uh, you don't want her flying off, you don't want to drop her on the floor so just very gently this goes around the queen and the clever thing about this is that none of the surfaces actually meet so your chances of actually injuring the queen are much lower than if you were using a I don't know some other type of <coughs> catching device um, this these two pieces don't meet they close leaving a gap that the queen can't get through the the edges of the uh, the clip itself don't meet there's a gap there so as you close this over the queen, you'll get several other bees in there as well. But of course, because of the slots in the side, those other bees can escape. Uh, and if they do or they don't, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got the queen in there, you can then just pop this in your top pocket or put it in the shade somewhere, maybe inside the hive. Just keep it out of the way of anything you're going to be doing in there. And that will keep the queen safe while you're working. And then when you're done, you just open it up and release her back into the hive. Very useful device, very cheap, a couple of pounds, and that is, I say, an essential piece of beekeeping equipment, whatever type of hive you're using. Okay, so let's move on to a very simple little idea. This is a hive number, and, well, I would say more accurately, uh, a queen number, because what I do with these is I follow Brother Adam's um, way of doing things because um, at the Abbey where Brother Adam worked at Brutfast Abbey, um, his system was to have um, enameled uh, numbers uh, on, on metal plates in that, with the numbers enameled and each number would follow a queen. So whatever number you chose, um, sequentially or otherwise, you would attach this to the hive. In this case, I'm using um, these these map pins. They've got a, a, a quite a big round head and a nice long pin. So you pop that through the hole, pin that to the side of the hive. In fact, I always pin it near the entrance of the hive because that's where I'm mostly going to be looking when I'm looking around uh, an apiary. So I pin this number near the entrance and then I know uh, which, hi which hive or which queen um, is in that hive. And of course, on my notes, um, m that, that number will relate to the queen and it will have a reference to her origin and her qualities, shall we say, um, which would include things like temperament, uh, prolificity, uh, honey, ga honey gathering capability, uh, and, and so on, and, and disease resistance. So I would record the qualities of that queen on this uh, on this number, such that if I move the queen to a different hive, this number will follow her. It's not the number of the hive, therefore, it's the number of the queen. So it will follow the queen wherever she goes, and then 
uh, when she eventually expires, then this number will be allocated to a new queen and so on. Um, I'm running about 50 hives at the moment and uh, this I've, I've numbered the first 18. This happens to be the next number in sequence. So I'll be renumbering the rest of them um, over the next week or two, uh, getting my records up to date so I know exactly what queen's in which hive. So these numbers come in sets of, I think, um, 50 or 100, something like that. Again, look on AliExpress, they're very cheap. It's something like £2.50, I think, for 50 numbers. Uh, they are made from a, um, an in they're engraved. I mean, there's, there's a surface coating which is cut through to, to for the numbers. So they're very permanent things. They're hard to lose, actually, even in, in the grass because you can get them in different colours. This happens to be red. You can get them in several different colours and you can colour code your entire apiary or apiaries uh, according to um, uh, what uh, queens you're rearing and so forth. Or you can just use them to number hives if you want to. Just, you know, you have, have uh, one of these on each hive. But it's an easy and secure way of numbering the hive. And this pin will stab through into wood or into polystyrene very easily. Okay, so that's hive numbering. Uh, right, so next up, oh, are these things here? Yeah, again, these are useful if you're using uh, actually almost any type of hive uh, with qualifications. I shall, I shall amend that in a minute. Now, what these do is they clip over the side of the hive. You can see they, they've got this clip on the side. They're made from, made from steel, fairly soft steel, um, so the, 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 the legs are bendable. Uh, they clip over the side of the hive so you can hang a frame across them. Now, if you're working on a hive, on a conventional frame hive, which has got a, a full complement of frames, when you take a frame out you, and then you want to look at the next one, there's nowhere to put the frame. Okay, so this gives you a place to put the frame. In fact, you can hang at least three, possibly four frames on this rack uh, when it's clipped to the side of the hive. So. Um, it's a really useful little gadget and again very cheap um, and I mean you could easily make your own I guess out of uh, wood um, with some metal bits on the on the side you can easily make your own uh, which you could obviously do if you prefer uh, these are very cheap to buy now the only thing I would say about them um, to caution you is this clip here is just the right size for clipping onto woodwork you know standard thickness woodwork I guess they're about I don't know 20 mil something like that gap um, if you want to use it on polystyrene hives you will find that that's too narrow if so then you're going to need to get to need a vise or a pair of pliers straighten this out and make a wider hook uh, to go on your polystyrene hives now then um, we're going to move on to these two devices which um, are kind of similar and in fact have very very uh, similar purpose um, and I shall tell you the, just the differences between them. They, they're sold as um, queen introduction cages, which is really, I think, their primary use. Now, you can also, this one here actually comes as a flat pack. I can, I think I can undo it, yeah. You can, okay, it comes flat, if you see what I mean, it comes flat. You actually have to assemble it by just clicking it together. Very easy to do. Um, this one has a comb a comb in the middle here we go which you can pull out and then you can insert it underneath uh, theoretically you can anyway yes it clips here we go it clicks into place like that underneath right so now you've effectively got two cages that's secure now um, you've got two cages um, Obviously, you're not going to introduce two queens at once, all right? The idea is you can pop a queen through this hexagonal hole, which has got a click fit doodad here. And, uh, yeah, it does, fit. it does click fit if you press it hard enough. Uh, or maybe if you just, there we go, click it in the right way. Um, you can keep two queens safe under here uh, by clipping it against a piece of comb. Just let me grab that comb again. Here we go, here's an old bit of comb. Now let's say for example you had in here 
there was some emerging brood, you could clip this over like that by just pressing it into the comb. You could clip that over the emerging brood. You could pop a queen into both sides, should you have two queens to keep safe for some reason. Or you could take that central comb out and then you could have a queen um, kept in here for introduction to a new colony. Okay, so uh, if you're introducing a queen, you obviously don't just pop a queen into a colony you have to introduce her slowly, and this is one way of doing it. So you would pop a queen into here uh, with emerging brood. The reason for the emerging brood is that when those bees come out of their cells, they're going to recognize this queen as their mother, regardless of the fact that she probably isn't. Um, they are going to be um, completely um, adapted to that queen straight away as they come out. So that will give you some bees in, in that cage who are familiar with this queen and that will probably encourage the other bees in the hive to also become familiar with the queen and adopt her as their own. That's the idea of queen introduction. There are other ways of introducing queens which I'll, which I'll deal with at a different time. But so this is one way of doing it and this particular cage is uh, again very inexpensive. Um, it's it's got versatile in the sense that you can introduce, well you wouldn't, wouldn't want to introduce two queens, but you can keep two queens in there. So let's say you had a couple of queens that had emerged, um, let's say the virgin queens, you want to keep them safe for a couple of days while you uh, set up your um, mating nukes, something like that, okay? So you, you could use this cage to keep a couple of queens safe. And on a any given frame, you could mount let me see, at least four or five of these. Uh, so you could keep numerous queens safe in one hive uh, using this type of cage. Now then, the other one is this type. Um, it's in some ways similar. It's only got four prongs in this particular case. It's simpler, there's only one moving part, which is this little plug here, which is obviously for popping the queen in. There's a little corner section here where you can put fondant uh, for the queen to eat while, um, while she's being uh, introduced. So this is another introduction cage. Um, and again, this clips over emerging brood, in this case quite a large area of emerging brood. So you could regard this as being perhaps a, let's say, a safer option for introducing a queen. This frame is a national standard national brood frame okay so you could get two of these side by side not to introduce two queens to one colony but theoretically if you wanted to keep two queens safe that's how you would do it but as an introduction cage it's very very good i've used this numerous times i've got several of these they're very good for introducing queens into a new colony uh, and i think the reason for that is because it covers quite a lot of emerging brood so if you've got a, 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 a frame with a quite a decent amount of emerging brood, you can easily pin this onto the frame using the little four little legs. Pop your queen in there, close that up. The queen is safe in there for, um, well, I would say certainly several days. I mean, I wouldn't like to go much beyond that, but she'd be fine actually for a week or so if necessary. Um, the bees can feed her through the uh, through the mesh here, through this, these little squares, and she will have c the company of uh, a number of emerging bees as they come out through there. So that's another way of doing it. This is another device, also very cheap. Um, have a look on AliExpress, you'll find these. And that's another way of introducing queens, or just keeping a queen safe for a while, uh, while you reorganize your apiary, for example. Okay, so that's all the gadgets I have for you today. Please let me know in the comments below whether you find this sort of thing useful. Um, and also let me know if there's anything particular you want me to look at, um, either as a gadget or as a you know, more serious piece of beekeeping equipment. I'm very happy to, to look at anything that's potentially useful for beekeepers. So yeah, do comment below one way or another. Is this pointless? Am I wasting my time? Or is this really yeah, potentially useful to you? Okay, so that's it all for now, folks. And I will see you in the next video. Or rather, technically, you'll see me in the next video. But, you know, that's what people say on YouTube, isn't it? Okay.
Cheers for now.